Hi and welcome to the next video in my series on credit modelling and today I'm going to be starting a probably reasonably short-ish series on support vector machines which are, is another useful tool in being able to distinguish between good and bad credit. So support vector machines are another different approach to working out how you can distinguish between something is good or bad. If you think about what we've looked at so far we've had um, generalized linear models where we try to essentially fit every, everything to um, a value of either 1 or 0. Uh, we've had linear discriminant analysis or discriminant analysis generally where we're trying to use parameters to make sure that everything that is in the same group is as tightly grouped as possible and the two, middle of the two groups as far apart as possible. We've got k-nearest neighbor where we're trying to decide um, what the characteristic of a particular company is based on the characteristics of companies nearest to it. Um, and what we're trying to do now is something called support vector machines. And this is basically trying to categorize stuff. It's trying to draw a line between the two groups of good and bad firms, which um, on the face of it sounds fairly straightforward, but it can get quite complicated with the maths which is involved. But, but the principles, I mean, the initial principles, I think, are, are, reasonably, are reasonably straightforward. So the, the broad principle of support vector machines is you're trying to find the best way of separating two groups of data, such as good and bad loans, uh, using um, well, a line if you've got two variables, if you've got three variables, that line becomes a plane. If you've got more than three variables, it becomes a, a hyperplane. So this is the, the kind of simplest example. We've got linear, linearly separable data, which means you've got data which can be separated by a line. You're looking at um, two variables here, uh, so you can do it in two dimensions. And uh, it just uses a, a straight line to divide, in this case, solvent and insolvent firms. Now, as you can probably see from this, um, you've got, uh, which I've labeled series seven because I didn't get around to relabeling it, um, you've, you've got more than one line here which can separate the data. So the first thing to ask is, well, what is the best line that we can draw to separate the data? And, and, and how, do we, how do we define this? Well, Although there are many ways that you can separate the data, the, the, the best way is the separating line which gives the widest margin between the two sets of data. And, and this margin is defined by the two closest points to each other. So, so what you need to try to do is try to find this margin, try to find out what the largest margin is, because this will define the line that you use, the, 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 the best separating line between these two data sets. So let's start defining things a little bit more formally. Um, and let's decide, define a set of points, um, x1, m, x2, m, all the way, uh, and y, m, where, where m is uh, anything from 1 to capital M. Uh, x1, m, and x2, m are the two characteristics of firm m. So say profitability, or um, size, or uh, assets over liability or, or, or some other measure and ym is either 1 or minus 1 um, depending on whether a firm is solvent or not. So what we've got here is for, for firm m these two measures and uh, an indicator as to whether it is solvent or not. Now the best, uh, the separating line is a set of points um, measured by x1m and x2m that satisfies this equation here. Beta naught equals beta1 x1m plus beta2 x2m. Now that's fine, but it should be clear that um, this is scalable. So you know you can multiply everything through by alpha, where alpha could be anything at all, and you still get the same line. So you need to add a few more constraints to make sure that you've got a, a unique line. So how do we do this? What we do is we define the margins. So we say let's have beta 1 x1 m plus beta 2 x2 m minus beta 0 is equal to 1. 
and anything above this line, ym is equal to 1, then beta 1 x 1 m plus beta 2 x 2 m minus beta 0 equals minus 1, and anything below this has a value of ym of minus 1. So anything above that top line is solvent, anything below the bottom line is insolvent. Now if we do this, then this means our margin width is 2 over beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared square rooted, or it's 2 over the norm of uh, beta 1 and beta 2. Um, and any points which are actually sitting on these margins, these are known as support vectors. And this, this is where we get the, the, the term support vector machines from. So, two key features about this margin. This margin width of uh, 2 over the square root of beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared, what that implies is that as beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared falls, the margin gets bigger. And the margin constraints imply that ym multiplied by the expression inside those brackets, beta 1 x 1 m plus beta 2 x 2 m minus beta 0, is always going to be greater than or equal to 1 for any combination of x1 m, x2 m, y m, if the data is linearly separable. So if we want to make the margin as wide as possible, what we need to do is minimize beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared, because that gives you a bigger margin, subject to that constraint that y m multiplied by the stuff inside the bracket is greater than or equal to 1. So why is it going to be greater than or equal to 1? Um, well, if, if you remember the equations before, where you had everything um, below the line if uh, ym was minus 1 and above the line if it was ym was plus 1, you're always multiplying it by a negative if it's below the line and by a positive if it's above the line, so you'll always end up with an expression greater than or equal to 1. So, what I've got here is an example in uh, Excel for a couple of variables um, for 50 firms, some of which are solvent and some of which have defaulted. And I've got various financial ratios. I've just used EBIT over assets and the log of assets over liabilities for this two-dimensional version. Um, I've set the variable default to one for solvent firms and minus one for insolvent firms. I just need to make one small change to this data to make sure it was linearly separable. And then you can go about trying to work out what the parameters for the margin would be. So this is all it takes in a spreadsheet, not very much at all. Um, you've got here this expression which is A2, so the default number, multiplied by the sum product of um, B2 to C2, so those two variables, uh, and uh, F2 to G2, which is beta 1 and beta 2, minus E2, which is beta naught. And what you're doing is you're copying that all the way down um, and just fixing the uh, references to beta naught, beta 1 and beta 2. And what you want to do is you want to minimize, find a minimum of that set. Okay, So you want to find the smallest number of that set because that is going to be your constraint. You then look at what the norm, uh, well, the norm squared of beta 1 and beta 2 is, which is essentially, um, we calculate it as uh, F2 G2 times F2 G2, the sum product of those, which is essentially beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared. So that is what you are going to be trying to um, adjust to try to make sure the margin is as uh, big as possible. So you're going to try and make that as small as possible. So how, how do we do this? Well, we go to the uh, solver function. So for those of you that haven't used uh, solver already, this is just how you uh, enable it. You go to the uh, uh, options and into add-ins, and then you click on the button to um, manage Excel add-ins at the bottom, make sure that solver add-in is checked, click on OK, and then you're ready to go. Then when you run the solver, what you are trying to do is you are trying to set the objective on G4. So you're trying to make G4 as small as possible. So click on min and make sure set objective is referring to G4. By changing cells E2 to G2, so by changing beta 0 to beta 1 and beta 2, and subject to the constraint that I1, so the lowest value of any of those calculations, is greater than or equal to 1. You also need to make sure that you leave uh, that make unconstrained variables non-negative um, uh, unchecked, 
Um, it doesn't necessarily work properly if you don't do that. And then just click on Solve. And if you do that, this is the line that you get. So it shows that the um, data uh, set is linearly separable, and it shows you what the maximum separating line is. So a pretty straightforward approach there. So that's how it looks for two variables, but it is pretty straightforward to generalize it for um, a large number of variables, up to k variables, as I, as I called them here. Now the first thing you do is, instead of just having um, uh, x1m and x2m, you go all the way up to xkm, and you define that as the vector xm, which is a bold uh, x uh, lowercase m. And your set of points then becomes a bold xm, where that's a vector, comma ym, where m is uh, from 1 to capital M for uh, the number of firms that you're looking at. And then the best separating hyperplane becomes beta naught equals bold beta transpose xm, where that bold vector beta is beta 1, beta 2, all the way to beta k. And the margin becomes beta transpose xm minus beta naught equals 1 to bold beta transpose xm minus beta naught equals minus 1. And the width of this is now 2 over the norm of that vector beta, or 2 over the square root of beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared all the way up to beta k squared. So the problem now becomes minimizing the norm of beta squared, which is going to give you the largest margin again, subject to ym times bold beta transpose xm minus beta naught is greater than or equal to 1. So it's exactly the same as before, it's just you've um, replaced your um, beta 1 x1m and beta 2 x2m with a vector of betas and uh, a vector of x's. So again you can do this in Excel and uh, I've just ex expanded this from two variables to three variables so now we've got uh, retained earnings over assets as the, as the third column and you'll see we've moved from um, beta naught 1 and 2 to beta naught 1, 2 and 3 but everything else is pretty much the same. And the formula is also very similar. Instead of the sum product being over two variables, it's now over three variables, um, columns B to D and columns uh, G to I, still less B to naught in column F, and that formula gets copied all the way down. You're still looking at the minimum of those, which you want to try to, uh, well, you will, constrain to being uh, greater than one. And the norm squared that you're looking at is now over three variables, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. Um, uh, so again, it's uh, essentially g2 squared plus h2 squared plus i2 squared. And all you need to do is just um, uh, carry out the um, same analysis that you did before to, to find the line. Now, what you can then do is you can say, well, what happens if we've actually got a couple of candidates? Um, can we see whether these candidates are solvent or insolvent? And, and the way we can do this is we can say, well, let's look at the variables that we've got and um, apply that formula to them. So for a two-variable case, uh, look at EBIT over assets and log of assets over liabilities, multiply by the, those by the beta 1 and the beta 2 that we've got, and knock off beta naught. And then see if we get a number which is either greater than 1 or less than minus 1. If it's greater than 1, we know it's solvent. If it's less than minus 1, we know it's insolvent. And if it's somewhere in between, then, then we're, not, we're not certain. And you can do that for an insolvent or a, or a solvent candidate. You can do it for two dimensions or, or three dimensions. Um, it's, it's still going to be the same, the same calculation. And if we do that, I mean, this is something which I've done for two uh, dimensions and, and three dimensions for these two. We can find that the solvent candidate um, has values which are much greater than one in both cases. The insolvent candidate is much less than minus one in both cases. So we can see that both of those candidates fall very clearly on the right side of um, the margins to predict whether they are solvent or insolvent. So, you know, that, that is suggesting that this is a, a pretty a pretty robust approach.
Now, that's fine if the data is linearly separable, but in the real world, it's, it's often not. Um, if you, for example, with this data set I've got here, if you move to four dimensions, to four variables, it's no longer linearly separable with this, with this data set. And there's a number of ways that you can deal with this. You can um, soften the approach of that margin. So rather than have a hard margin, you can move to a soft margin. You can map the data to a, a higher dimension, or you can use a, a non-linear model. And we'll cover all those in uh, some of the forthcoming videos. So let's leave it there for now. That is um, some of the basics on support vector machines. Um, it does get a little bit more complex than that as we work through it, but uh, at least now you should understand what the principles are and see what we're trying to do when we're dividing data and we're creating those margins.